The latest update of OBS added a bunch of extra settings for NVENC that weren't there before. People are confused, but I'm here to tell you exactly what to use to record in high quality. Now, before we go over all the settings, I want to mention the sponsor of today's video because a lot of you are also streamers and getting graphics for your stream can be a real hassle. All the free graphics out there are very bad and then when you want to pay a designer, it's extremely expensive. So the middle ground between that is the sponsor of today's video, which is Owned. Owned.tv has a huge library of graphics specs that are of the highest quality and that are all completely animated. When you're on the page of a specific graphics pack, you can click on live demo and with this tool you can test everything that's inside of the pack. For example, if you click on Twitch alerts, you can see how the alert looks. You can click on overlays on the top and then on scene transition and you will see exactly how it will look on your stream. Now I see that there's a 50% sale here on the right but my code TVN always has 50% off. Now besides graphics, you can for example also find the remote makers. This is a static one but this is an animated emote maker and you can simply upload a picture from your PC. For example, this is a profile picture of mine. And just like that, you can transform it. Own.tv is an awesome website. If you're a streamer, you need to check it out to see if there's anything you want. I will link them in the description as my code TVN gives 50% of the price. The link is own.gg slash TVN. Now, when you do a clean install of OBS Studio, it will look kind of like this. And what I recommend most of the time is to make a new profile preset and a new scene collection. I just did that. As you can see, OBS recording tutorial, profile, also OBS recording tutorial. You just click on new, you give it a name because some of the stuff is saved in your profile preset than the other stuff in your scene collection. And there is some overlap between what's saved in terms of the settings and the graphics and stuff. So what I do is I make a new one for both of them for every scenario. I give it the same name as you can see, setup react, scene collection, setup react. And then before adding your game or your webcam or your microphone or all that stuff, we want to go to the settings and we want to set up the video and the output settings. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is go to the video tab and then select your main resolution of your screen right here and also right here. Now for live streaming, some people choose their main resolution right here and then another lower resolution in this drop down because this here is what's going to the stream and then this here is what you're setting up right here in your preview. However, if you are recording a game or your screen, you always want to record in the highest quality. You want to choose the resolution of your screen so you have the most amount of pixels in the editing because let's say you have a 1440p monitor but you select 1080p here and then also 1080p here. Then if you zoom in in the editing, you will have lesser quality compared to selecting 1440p here and then also right here. So that's definitely going to be your goal. Now I have a weird resolution here as my highest resolution and this is because I'm recording a YouTube video and I'm recording in 2 by one And this is actually a good tip if you're recording YouTube videos. Obviously not for gaming, but for a tutorial, for example, people watch on their phones. And if I play one of my videos on my phone, you will see that it fills almost completely on the width. And the reason it's doing that is because I'm recording very wide. Now since this is an NVIDIA tutorial, I can show you how to do it. And so in the NVIDIA control panel, you can click on change resolution, then on customize. And then as you can see, I made the custom one. So you just click on create custom resolution and then you take the native width of your monitor. In my case, it's 3840 because I have a 4K monitor. And then you just take a calculator, you type in the resolution, you divide it by two, and then this is gonna be your height. So you select it right here and then you click on test on the bottom and you will have it right here. And then as a result, when you go to display settings, you can select that custom resolution right here. So doing this can be useful if you play games that allow you to change your resolution. Or of course, if you record a tutorial like this one, most people will watch this tutorial for gaming. So I'm gonna choose 1440 here and then also right here. Now as your FPS, most of the time you will want to choose 60, especially when you're recording games, you want a higher FPS so it's more smooth when people watch it. And there are very few scenarios where 30 is better than 60. So most of the time it's set to 30 if your PC can't handle recording in 60 FPS. However, since we are using NVENC from NVIDIA, you will definitely be able to choose 60 here. And then after that, it's time to go to the output settings and to change the output mode to advanced. Now, there are two tabs that are important for us here. It's the recording tab and then the replay buffer. I will go over this later. We're going to do the recording first. And some of you will think, well, I'm just going to change the recording path and I'm going to start recording. But definitely do not do that because as you can see, the encoder says use stream encoder. And so what that is going to do right now is use the settings we have here in the stream tab, which by default are very low settings. And this is absolutely not what you want to use for recording. You want to go to the recording tab and then change the encoder to NVENC. And we're going to choose NVENC H264. Now this opens a bunch of extra settings and most of these are new. So that's why a lot of people are confused. I'm just going to explain you exactly what I use. And we're going to go from top to bottom. So on the top, your recording path. This is pretty simple. You just choose where you want to save your files. You could make a new folder 
call it OBS recordings, click select folder and then all your recordings will be saved there. Now the next thing is really important, recording format. Many people are drawn to selecting MP4 here because everyone knows that. However, as you can see, we get a warning right here and the warning basically says that if your recording corrupts in the middle of recording, you will lose everything. So as you can see right here in my other OBS window, I've been recording for 41 minutes right now. If I would be recording an MP4 and my PC crashes right now, I would lose all of it. So because of that, you want to record an MKV. If you get a crash in the middle, everything from before that will be saved to your hard drive. So you never have to worry about quickly saving your recording in case your PC crashes. That doesn't happen. Well, the crash can happen, but you get your recording. Now, when you've been recording in MKV, that file type isn't really usable in a lot of editing programs. So what you want to do is change it to MP4. So you use MKV for the safe recording and then you turn it into MP4. And the way to do it is going to File, Remix Recordings. You just select one of your recordings. So I'm going to do it for one of mine. For example, this here is an 11 minute MKV file. And as you will be able to see, I will click on Remix and it goes extremely quick. Now it says the file already exists. Click on yes, boom, it's done. And so just like that, as you can see for my recordings, for every MKV file, I also have the MP4 file that's about the same file size. Now a great tip to do this automatically is going to the settings, then going to advanced, and then right here you will see automatically remix to MP4. You just enable that. And then look at that. I'm going to press start recording. As you can see on the bottom, it's recording. Two seconds, three seconds. I press stop recording and then boom, it automatically remixes. And then after this, I have both an MKV and an MP4 file. Now next you see audio tracks. This is also extremely important, especially for recording, not that much for streaming, but for recording is very crucial. I know these are a lot of settings, but if you get through all of them one time, then it's set up forever. Then every time you want to record, you press start recording, you press stop, it remixes and you've got the file. So it's really important to go through all of these and the audio tracks are actually really cool. So as you can see, we've got six of them right here. And if I close this window, I actually have to go to the settings again because we want to go to the audio tab. And so I'm going to add my default audio device right here. This is going to be my game sound, my PC sound, all of that. And then I'm also going to add a microphone. So for example, voice chat mic, this here, I'm going to click on OK. And then now I have two audio devices here in the mixer, my game sound, and then my microphone. Now here's the problem. If you're recording a long gaming session with commentary, for example, if you want to edit it later, there might be parts where you want to keep the game sound, but you want to remove your voice or something even more applicable. You may want to make your segment more interesting and you may want to switch around what you said during the voice recording recording, but you don't want it to mess up your gaming sound. So let's say you had a boring part in your gameplay, then a really interesting part and then a boring part. What you could do to create more interesting content is take some of the things you said between the boring parts and then move some of those voice lines to the more interesting part. However, that's not possible if you have only one audio track because you will be moving the game sound and stuff too. So if you go to the audio mixer, you click one of these icons here and then you go to advanced audio properties, you will see the same six tracks right here, the same checkboxes. And so I'm going to disable all of them. And then you can say, I want to send the desktop audio to track one and then the microphone audio to track two. So then you just close this. Now we go back to the settings. You go to the output settings, recording. And now right here, you can select which audio tracks you want to add to your recording. So if we deselect all of them, we just send our game sound to track one and then we send our microphone sound to track two. Now, if you do it this way, then you will have two tracks in your recording and whatever is on track one or track two or three, etc., will be determined by what you selected in the advanced audio properties. Now, the next thing is what we changed already, the encoder, NVIDIA, NVENC. This is what this whole video is about. This is the most important thing, but there are a bunch of settings here. First of all, the rescale output, you can disable this. We don't want to rescale. You don't need to use this here and you don't need to use this. So we can go immediately to the encoder settings. Now, the rate control is the first thing that confuses a lot of people. And basically, the rate control determines how many bits per second are used in your recording. Now, the bits per second is basically how much data is being used each each second to save your recording. So the more bits per second, the higher your file size will be, but most of the time also the higher the quality will be. Now, if you select CBR, this stands for constant bit rate. And as you can see, you can choose one single bit rate. And for example, a 1080p YouTube video is around 12,000 kilobits per second. Now, if you're really concerned about file size and about hard drive space, then selecting a constant bit rate can be useful. For example, for 1080p, I would advise something like 
20,000 kilobits per second. For 4K, probably like 50,000, 60,000. But I mean, if we get to these sizes, you can just as well let OBS choose a file size. So it's optimal for the recording. So what you can do is you can select CQP. And what this does is you just select a quality level and then OBS will decide how much data it needs to save in order to make whatever is on your screen, for example, your game, in order to make sure that the quality of it is going to be good enough. So by default, it selects 20. And this is actually a pretty good setting. You don't really need to change this. And I'm going to give a really simple example so you understand what this does in terms of changing the bitrate. If I'm recording a tutorial like I'm recording right now, a lot of parts on the screen aren't really moving. Like, for example, I'm doing this drop down here, but like this drop down is the only thing that's moving. And then even when it moves after that, a lot of these pixels here aren't really changing for a very long time. Now, to save a recording like this, for example, OBS doesn't really need that much data. So I can record for like an hour long and the file is going to be really tiny. Now, on the other hand, if you're recording an FPS game where the screen is changing all the time and there are very little elements on the screen that don't really change, now, for example, your profile icon on the bottom left or the amount of bullets you have left or like all that kind of stuff, that doesn't change all the time, but all the other pixels on the screen are constantly changing, which means that OBS will save a lot of data to your PC in order to recreate whatever was happening on your screen after recording. So the file size will be very big. So if you select CQP and you just choose a quality level, you can't really predict the file size. So you will have to play around with this. The higher you go, the lower the quality. So if you select 25, I did test this, then the file size will be about half compared to choosing 15, which will double your file size. Now you can leave this at 20, but it's just very useful to know what you're exactly setting up. And I think you'll understand now. Now the keyframe interval, you can just set this to two seconds. And then the preset, this is something we're gonna skip for a moment because I wanna do the other settings first because this is the last thing you wanna set up because this determines how hard it is for your PC to record and then what quality you will get. So you wanna tweak this after setting up the rest. The tuning, you wanna leave this at high quality. Then the multi-pass mode, you can set this to single pass. Eposvox did a lot of testing on this and I think he said that it's not really useful to make it higher or that at least it's not really worth it. The profile, you can leave this at high, disable look ahead, enable psycho visual tuning, set the GPU to zero and then the max B frames to two. Now I know I'm going really in depth on some settings and then I'm pretty much skipping over the other ones and telling you like set it to this. But the reason is that I want to go in depth on the stuff that's really useful for you to know and the stuff that will actually require you to change it afterwards. For example, I want really in depth on the CQP and then the quality level and the file size because this is actually going to affect you. If you're saving your recordings and you run out of hard drive space and you would rather have a recording quality that's a bit lower in terms to save a lot of hard drive space, well then now you know that you can just make this higher and then how it will affect your whole recording. Now the last thing to set up before adding your game and stuff and this is actually the most important setting is the preset quality. Now this wasn't here before and basically P1 is the lowest quality but it's also the easiest for your PC to run and then P7 is the highest quality but this is very taxing for your GPU and by the way you don't want to set it to P7 because the quality is pretty much the same as P6 and P7 is a lot harder to run. Now you want to aim to stay between P3 and then P6 but you want to test around to see if you can run it. I'd say set it to P6 then follow the rest of this tutorial and then do a test recording and if your PC could run it awesome you have really high quality if your pc can't really run it then you can just lower this to p5 do another recording if it's still too hard to p4 and then that way you can find the perfect quality for you if your pc still can't run it what you can try to do you don't really want to do this but you could set this to 30 fps instead of 60. you could also try lowering the resolution right here to 1080p or 720p if you change this resolution make sure you also change this one here to the same i'm gonna set it back to 1440p and you could also try making this higher. However, I don't think that this has a big effect on your recording stability. The biggest thing by far is choosing the right one right here and then your main resolution. Now, before we add our game right here, I almost forgot there is one thing I need to show you. Under the output, besides the recording tab, we also have the replay buffer. This is really useful if you don't want to make a really long recording or you want to save hard drive space and you just want to save your awesome place in game. So what the replay buffer is going to do is it's going to allow you to set a hotkey and if you press it, you save the last 20 seconds 
10 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever you choose, you save that to your PC. So you can just game and whenever you have an awesome play, you wait like one or two seconds so you have a good ending to your clip. Then you press the button, the last 30 seconds of whatever you did set up right here, for example, your game here or a screen recording or I don't know, that will be saved to your PC. You do need to set up a hotkey for that. So under hotkeys, you can go to replay buffer. You can set a hotkey. For example, I'll set this one, click on apply and the replays will also be saved to where you set your recording path. So this here, and I'm quickly going to show you because instead of clicking on start recording, you don't want to do that. You want to click on start replay buffer. And then now it's always going to record our screen and it's going to record the last 30 seconds. If we go past that, the other stuff will get dropped. And so now let's say I'm gaming. I have an awesome play. I press the button. And as you can see on the screen, Remix recording, it automatically transfers it. Boom, here's our replay. Now I quickly started the game of Solitaire on my PC. I'm gonna put it on the second screen because there are three ways to add your game in OBS Studio. The first one is Display Capture and this simply captures your whole screen. You can leave the capture method to automatic and then you can choose your display. For example, this here is my second one. And then as you can see, this just adds a source that captures your whole screen. However, this is the least efficient way of capturing your screen. Now, if you wanna record tutorials like I am right now, you want to use this because it captures like your whole monitor. But there are two other ways of capturing window capture and then game capture. Now I want to show window capture to you because some games can't be captured with game capture. You just select the window you want to capture. For example, solitaire here, press OK and then boom, it's the same thing. The source you want to try to use is game capture. This works with most games. You change the mode to capture specific window and then in the drop down, you select your game. In our case, solitaire. Now we're looking at works because with a lot of windowed games, which well, this is. As you can see, it's a simple window. It's not really a full screen game. In a lot of cases, this will not work. An example of a game that doesn't work with game capture is CSGO. With CSGO, you want to choose window capture. And another really well-known example is a League of Legends launcher. So League of Legends itself, the game can be captured with game capture. However, if you want to record your launcher, you want to show champion select to people. In that case, you want to choose window capture for the launcher and then game capture for the game itself. Try game capture first. If it doesn't work, try window capture. And if that doesn't work use display capture that will always work it just records everything that's on your monitor so now that we have the game we can click start recording i can do something on the side screen here i can just click stop recording as you will see, it will remix the recording. And then it's right here. We have an MP4. That's the highest quality we can record with on our PC. And it will also have our PC sound or the game sound and our microphone on separate tracks because we use track one and track two. I really hope you learned a lot with this video. That tutorial will teach you how you can make your microphone sound much better. The difference is impeccable. And then this video right here will be recommended to you by YouTube. I hope it's not a short, but it probably will be. Anyway, like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more content like this and I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day.